THX 1138 is a movie from 1971 that takes us into a future where people live in a high-tech underground city. The government controls everything, and everyone must take drugs to stop their feelings. The story follows THX, a man who stops taking these drugs and starts to feel again. He falls in love and decides to escape to the outside world. This movie is special because it shows us a world that is very different from ours, but it also makes us think about what it means to be free and to be human. The movie is still loved today because it was one of the first to show a future like this, and it did it in a very real way. It's not just about the cool machines and the future, it's about people trying to find their place in the world. There are also some surprising facts about the movie. For example, the strange white costumes and shaved heads were not common in movies back then, and the way the movie was made was very new and different. Now we want to know about your connection to THX 1138. What is your most special memory or experience with this movie? Your stories and memories are important to us, so please share them in the comments below. We're looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Keep watching because there are many more funny, shocking, and sad facts about THX 1138 coming up. Don't miss out! George Lucas's film THX 1138 presents a science fiction narrative set in a future society that is highly regulated and controlled. The protagonist, known as THX 1138, lives a life that on the surface appears comfortable with a selected partner and a stable job. However, this existence is maintained within an underground city-wide psychiatric ward-like setting where adherence to societal norms is enforced by mechanical constables and mandatory medication. This film, initially broadcast on KTVU, can be seen as an allegory for mental health issues, reflecting Lucas's background in psychology. The film's technical aspects, such as sound design, acting, and cinematography, are executed with skill, particularly considering the budget constraints that lend a minimalist aesthetic to the film's environment. The special edition DVD includes additional footage aimed at modernizing the film for contemporary audiences. THX 1138's journey, marked by his struggle with emotional regulation and eventual rebellion against the constraints of his society, mirrors the experiences of individuals and in mental health facilities globally. The film is accessible and can be appreciated as a standalone science fiction work or as a deeper exploration of psychological themes. It serves as an interesting example of the evolution of commercial cinema and is worth watching at least once to form one's own opinion. In the narrative world, the character known as 1A138THX is a magnum manipulator assigned to cell 9041 and precinct 3. His residence is detailed as level 6421, complex 12, ramp 5. Sharing his living space with 3D417 LUH, the film's creator, George Lucas, provides insight into the non-lethal nature of the robot police in this society. They are designed to be incapable of causing real harm, with their most severe actions being merely irritating. This limitation is intentional to prevent any potential revolts or situations where they might turn on their creators. The violent acts depicted, such as a police robot brutally attacking someone, are fabrications meant to instill a deep-seated fear of law enforcement among the citizens. For the voices that represent the omnipresent overseers and announcers, Lucas enlisted the help of the committee, a theater group from San Francisco. He provided them with basic character sketches and allowed the performers to freely create all the background conversations heard throughout the film. This approach added a layer of authenticity to the unseen characters that guide and control the dystopian society. In an innovative approach to casting, George Lucas turned to the Sinan and Drug Rehabilitation Facility to find extras for his film. The individuals from Sinan, already bald as part of their recovery process, fit the aesthetic needs of the film's futuristic setting. This facility would later be referenced in Philip K. Dick's novel volleys. For a pivotal chase sequence, a telephone exchange served as the backdrop, providing a labyrinth of electronic equipment that doubled as the film's technological environment. Lucas, the visionary behind this project, regards it as a significant personal accomplishment, reflecting his dedication to pushing the boundaries of filmmaking. In the process of awakening from a controlled state, the protagonist's journey is marked by visual disruptions. These disruptions are crafted through deliberate breaks from traditional cinematography rules, specifically the 180 rule, to enhance the feeling of disorientation. This choice mirrors the character's own unsettled perception of reality. 
Further, the design of the robots in the film bears a striking resemblance to a well-known droid from a later space saga, hinting at a shared visual language in science fiction cinema. Additionally, the film's influence extends into music, with its audio elements being sampled in a track by a prominent industrial rock band, showcasing its cultural reach beyond cinema. In a shift from initial plans due to budget constraints, the production of George Lucas' early work was relocated from Japan to the more financially manageable locations of San Francisco and Los Angeles. This project marked the debut film of American Zotrope, a studio founded by Francis Ford Coppola. Notably, the film features the first appearance of the A113 code, which would later become a recurring element in Pixar films, symbolizing the connection between filmmakers and studios. This code is subtly placed on the lapel of Robert Duvall's character, known as THX. In a unique choice for the era, the film features only African-American actors as holograms on television screens, including SRT, who breaks free from the virtual realm. George Lucas, the creator, subtly nods to this work in his later films, embedding references like a car's license plate reading THX 138 and a prison cell numbered 1138. Additionally, the sound certification from his company bears the name THX. Even in the expansive universe of Star Wars, the number 1138 surfaces, marking a deactivated battle droid. The chase sequences showcase the Lola T-70 Mark I-I, a race car model, adding a touch of realism to the futuristic setting. In the realm of science fiction, certain elements resonate through time, connecting different eras and series. The Shaman song Omega Amigo features a line from Mom, a character whose voice echoes the theme of control and submission. This line, My Time Is Yours, is a direct sample from the film. Ian Wolf, known for his role as PTO, bridges the gap between classic science fiction sagas having appeared in episodes of Star Trek that are beloved by fans. His presence creates a subtle link between this film and the larger science fiction universe that includes Star Wars. The film's climactic underground chase was filmed in an incomplete section of the Caldecott Tunnel, adding a layer of authenticity to the high-stakes scene. This location in Oakland, California was transformed into a futuristic setting, demonstrating the innovative use of real-world environments in filmmaking. Innovative sound design is a hallmark of this film, utilizing altered telephone dial tones for its electronic effects. Promotional materials often depict a moment absent from the final cut, where mechanical enforcers discover a deceased religious figure, a scene hinting at deeper narrative layers. The director's personal experiences with medical professionals following a severe car accident inspired a particularly humorous yet unsettling sequence involving the protagonist's involuntary physical reactions. These elements contribute to the film's unique atmosphere and storytelling approach. In the process of creating a groundbreaking science fiction film, a humorous offhand remark made by voice actor Terence McGovern during a recording session inadvertently birthed a term that would become synonymous with one of the most beloved characters in cinematic history. McGovern, while recording dialogue, improvised a line about running over a Wookiee on the expressway, a playful nod to his friend Bill Wookiee. This spontaneous creation caught the attention of director George Lucas, who adapted the term into Wookiee, the name of the towering furry species represented by Chewbacca in the later Star Wars saga. The origins of the film trace back to Lucas's days as a student at the University of Southern California, where his short film project, Electronic Labyrinth THX 11384F, garnered critical acclaim. This success led to the opportunity to expand the concept into a full-length feature, with the support of Lucas's mentor, Francis Ford Coppola. Despite the financial setbacks faced by Coppola's production company, American Zotro, and the film itself, the project's innovative approach, and the attention it received laid the groundwork for Lucas's subsequent projects, including American Graffiti, and ultimately, the Star Wars series. A notable moment in the film occurs when the protagonist commandeers a police vehicle, and a voice over the radio mentions an incident involving a Wookiee on the expressway, echoing McGovern's earlier ad-lib. This line not only serves as an Easter egg for fans, but also marks the conceptual link between Lucas's early work and his later, more famous creations. 
The film's legacy, while not immediately apparent in its initial reception, would ripple through Lucas's career, influencing his storytelling and the creation of one of the most enduring universes in film history.